Hello! I am John Benderwaffles Algets, and this is the second episode of my RPG Maker tutorial series. Now in this episode, we're covering the game design document, which is something that everyone should do before starting a game project, whether it's an RPG or otherwise. I know that this is not the most exciting part of the process, and that this will probably be the most boring episode that I put out in this entire series, but as I said earlier, this is an incredibly important step. If you start developing your game without doing any prior planning, you may eventually find yourself backed into a corner and not sure where to go next. So let's get over to my computer and take a look at a basic example of a game design document. Uh, it's suddenly a different time of night and uh, I'm wearing a different shirt. But anyways, here we are. We're in front of my computer. I use OpenOffice uh, because I actually prefer it over Microsoft Office. So we're going to open it up here. and We'll bring it up to the top. Now, this is a very basic example of a game design document because if I went too in-depth, first of all, there'd be a lot of redundant information. And second of all, this project doesn't really call for a super complex in-depth one. Um, your game projects might be longer. This one's only five pages long, but uh, yeah, it's just you'll do these sort of things on a project by project basis. So we have obviously starting off with the title page, nothing super exciting here. There's nothing on it other than the title. Um, we say game design document. I put a nice bar to pretty it up and then it has my business. Uh, yeah. So that's just where you put your, your business stuff. Then we have the index, which all proper documents should have. Uh, this is a list of everything that we're going to talk about. And it's in the order that we're going to talk about it on the first page over here. Uh, we have the summary and the gameplay. The summary is where you outline your entire story, the entire project story, everything, point by point that happens in the game. Um, luckily enough, this project is super simple, so I don't have to go too in depth. Usually the summary in by itself could be pages upon pages. Uh, that's usually the longest section that you have. Uh, gameplay. I try to say, I try to describe the gameplay in as few words as possible. Uh, usually one or two sentences. So we're going for classic JRPG style, similar to old Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest games. We're using RPG Maker. That's just natively what it's going to come out like. Uh, technical. This is where you talk about everything that makes up the game on a very like specific level. So when you're talking about screens, uh, we're talking about everything that the player is going to see. From the main menu to the overworld to the battle system, the menu. I didn't go into a lot of detail on this one because these are all systems that are built into RPG Maker that we're going to talk about at a later time. Uh, controls. Again, try to say this in as few words as possible. You want to keep it simple. You want to keep it concise. Uh, mechanics. Normally you'd go into a lot of detail here. If you have like an interesting mechanic to your game, like you're playing with physics in a certain way, or if, or if you're going to be doing something really interesting with your game, you'd go into a lot of detail right here because we're working with RPG maker and we're trying to keep it fairly easy for you guys to follow along and learn. We aren't going to have any new interesting mechanics. So I just put down basic JRPG nothing special there level design this is a lot of people are going to be able to find this to be the most exciting part uh in the first section we talk about the areas this is what these are all the places that you're going to go uh and then the game flow actually describes in what order you're going to go uh so in our game, the player is going to leave their initial village and go to the king's castle where they're going to meet the king. Then he's going to go from there to the port town and he's going to get access to the boat. Then he's going to cross the ocean in the boat and go to a desert village. He's going to get a key item from an elder in the desert village, which is going to allow him to get into the desert ruins where he will fight a boss monster. He will then return to the desert village to the elder and get access to an airship. He will take the airship to the volcanic lair where he will fight the main bad dude. He'll save the princess and then the game will end. Simple to the point. Um, now with JRPGs, there's usually a lot in the middle. This section could be freakishly long. And usually in a lot of cases when it comes to RPGs, I would actually skip the game flow because your summary should have a lot of that information in it. It's not 
totally necessary for something like a platformer or an adventure game or something it's a little bit more necessary um and if you're working with a big team of people it's necessary but when you're working by yourself uh it's not something that you really need to worry about a thing that i want to stress with the game design document is that this is a very fluid document it's it's there is no real set way to do it you just need to plan as much as you can uh, development section, abstract classes and, der- and derived classes. This gets complicated, and I don't want to touch on this too much because this is kind of, well, it's boring, um, and it's not something that we really need to worry about. This is basically describing, like, uh, what classes of enemies there are. So there's, like, light enemies, big enemies, how they fit into parent classes, and it you get into a lot of the development side of things, and it gets really complicated so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, maybe in a later video, I will. A lot of these things that I skip over, that I gloss over, I'm thinking about talking about in a future episode, and this is definitely one of them. Uh, and is not something that we need right now, because we're just going to use the basic uh, built-in RPG Maker stuff. Um, okay, graphics. Self-explanatory. Uh, we're going to be talking about like what the style attributes. So what? So how? The basic idea of what your graphics look like. We're using the style that fits in with the RPG Maker VX Ace default graphics, and we aren't going to be straying from that. Uh, then you have a section graphics needed. We're going to outline all of the individual graphics that you need. Right there, guys, is a spoiler for a future episode. We're going to be talking about new player characters. We're going to do both one, both ones in the character generator, and we're going to go in and create new graphics using um, a nice pixel art program that I recommend that you all pick up. Uh, Sound and music. Uh, This is a lot like the graphics, only for sound. There's style attributes. We're going to be, again, working with the default RPG Maker VXA's style. Uh, Sounds needed. We're going to make some new skill sounds for this one. Again, using a tool that I recommend this one, though, is free and is you know something that you do in your browser music needed we aren't going to make music for this one guys that gets complicated maybe in a later episode like if i do like an advanced series maybe but that's just that gets really complicated all right and then schedule you would usually normally put a schedule in here i am electing not to because i don't want to spoil what the future episodes are going to be in what order so i just put a little message here um you guys would usually go through and outline exactly in what order you want to get things done as a like as a little bonus thing i'm going to tell you how i usually approach game development when it comes to something like an rpg the very first thing i do is i create all of the maps before i touch anything else i make all the maps Obviously, after, like, coming up with the story and stuff, so I know what kind of maps I need. So, I do with all the mapping, and then after that, it's all of the, like, extra graphics, like, character sprites and everything like that. And then I go into static scripting, which is, um... Static scripting are scripts that really don't do anything, so, like, NPCs that just talk to you and do nothing else and then i do dynamic scripting which is like events or like npcs that actually do stuff for you and then after that it's like you know your basic trimming and everything but uh so this was the game design document that we went over um or that we're going to go over for our game nothing super exciting but it's it's a necessary thing And that's it guys, that's the game design document. Now this step can be applied to games of all types, not just RPGs. Now if you want guys, you can download the document that I showed you in this video. There will be a link down in the description for that and you can use that as a sort of template for all your future planning documents. Next week we will be diving headfirst into RPG Maker and we'll be covering the world map creation process. If you guys want to see that, you can click this button here and that will take you to it. If the video is not up yet, that will instead take you back to my channel where you can subscribe. And speaking of which, guys, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, do a dislike. Uh, Leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of the episode and ask me any questions you might have about RPG Maker and I'll do my best to try to, you know, cover them in future episodes.
A big thanks to Cloud9Studios.net who are actually going to be partnering with me to help get my content to more and more viewers. Uh, you can check them out. There will be a link in the description down below. I will be pretty soon posting blogs and these videos on that website so you can go there for more information from me or just check out their games and get some inspiration for your own projects. And as always guys, don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.